Oi Brasil, olha eu aqui de novo com mais uma entrevista maravilhosa pra vocês. Coloquei até aqui, ó, uma roupa da Gucci, porque a gente vai conversar com ninguém mais, ninguém menos que Lady Gaga e Jared Leto. Os dois estão no lançamento do filme House of Gucci, que conta a história da família Gucci, que é a fundadora da Gucci. Só que o que tem por trás da Gucci é muito mais do que uma marca todo um mistério, a gente não tinha ideia do que aconteceu para essa grife acontecer. Então a gente vai descobrir nesse filme que conta a história de como a marca Gucci apareceu, de como ela liberou esse grande empreendimento e conta a história do Maurizio Gucci, interpretado pelo Adam Driver, aquele filho que não estava muito afim de fazer parte daquele império, sabe aquele rico que fala assim, ah, deixa pra lá, quero viver minha vida, quero estudar, ser advogado. Só que aí ele conhece a ambiciosa, maliciosa, sedutora, Maravilhosa Patrícia Regiane. Os dois acabam se envolvendo, tendo uma história de amor que depois. Não sei, não vou dar spoiler, mas não acaba muito bem. E o Jared Leto está irreconhecível nesse filme. Ele tem uma maquiagem que você não consegue reconhecer. Eu tive muita dificuldade de vê-lo e perguntei pra ele sobre esse processo de caracterização. O filme é dirigido pelo Ridley Scott, ou seja, é babado, tem mais de duas horas e meia de duração. E eu prometo que vocês vão ficar no cinema assim, ó olhando para tudo e paralisados. Inclusive, eu comentei com a Lady Gaga sobre Fun Tonight, o remix que ela fez com Pablo Vittar. Bafo, né? Então, vem assistir o meu papo com Lady Gaga e Jared Leto sobre House of Gucci. House of Gucci. House of Gucci, 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 Gucci. It was a name that sounded so sweet, so seductive. Synonymous with words, style, power. But their name was a curse too. Hey Gaga, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great talking to you. You're looking fabulous as always. Thank you. And be before we start, I need the blessing. Father, son, house of Gucci. Father, son, and house of Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> so I just watched <laughs> I just watched the movie and I'm mesmerized by it. And I was watching it with a friend and then after we watched it, we were discussing who Patricia were. Was she a villain? Was she just like smart or dumb or ganacious or visionary because she had a vision or she's just crazy? What are your thoughts on Patricia? I have a lot of thoughts about Patricia. Uh, I have worked for a long time now on this character. I worked for six months before we filmed, and then I worked for uh, three and a half months during filming. And I guess the first thing that comes to my mind when talking about her is I think she was in survival mode her whole life. She was always trying to survive. And I think even Gucci as an empire for her was a way of surviving and an opportunity to matter. I believe she was in love with Maurizio. I believe that he was in love with her and her strength. But I also believe that you notice in the film that she's never quite as shiny as the Gucci's. She's an okay. outsider. She never really fits in. There's something always a little off about her. There's something always a tad embarrassing. Now, as an actress, I thought about this, but it wasn't something I was trying to play. When I watched the movie back, I noticed that all of the things I put inside myself, my inner life, I noticed that it came to fruition and that you notice this, this barrier between her and everybody mm -hmm. else. It's almost like she's existing in their world and she's trying so much to be a conductor uh, and all the power that she has is an illusion. Because ultimately, when the men say no, they just dispose of her and that's it. And disposing of women causes pain. Yeah. So I'm, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to talk about is survival and pain. Okay. But do you get to understand her mind? Because I, I, I read that you saw a lot of interviews, but you chose to not meet her in person because she would lie to you, probably. So yeah, I, how do you... Okay, you can go. No, no, I keep going. I want to hear the rest of the question. I, I, I was just thinking, how hard is for you to play a person that is still alive and she still has 
it, she's still there to tell her story, but at the same time, you have to apart yourself from that to tell your vision from her. Well, you know, what was important to me was that I saw and read everything other than the book. I did not read the book. I was, I, I felt like the book was going to color my thinking and it gave me too many opinions about her. Uh, so I stayed away from the book, but I read lots of exposition and newspaper articles and I, I watched her a lot, but I noticed that she lied a lot. Uh, meaning I noticed this sort of mannerisms and the way that she would do things, uh, even the way she would blink a lot when she was speaking uh, after 1995, right? So after he was mm -hmm. murdered. And I thought to myself, she's, she's trying to generate a legacy for herself where she's remembered in a particular way. And I knew that that was not going to be helpful when building her mm -hmm. youth and building everything before 1995, because she would want me to play her in the way that she would want to be played, not to okay. tell the truth, but to, to, but to make her look good. Right. So mm -hmm. I said, let's stay away from this and let me do as much research as possible. And, and, and Thank not, you. not portray Patricia as my vision of her, but as, as a journalist, what do I believe? Okay. That's nice. Thank you so much, Gaga. I have to say that Brazil loves your version with Pablo Vittar of Fun Tonight, the remix oh, version. And we're you. still waiting you here for a concert. And love talking to you again. You're always so Thank you. You're wonderful. Thank you. So uh, I, I know you have a long relationship with the Gucci brand. So, but I, I was wondering if you knew the history about the, the story about the, the brand and the family before the movies? No, is the short answer. I didn't know anything about the story and it's odd because I'd worked with the brand for, you know, I've worked with Gucci for like seven or eight years now. And, you know, I didn't know anything about it. Uh, it was it was a complete surprise to me. And uh, I think audiences are gonna be shocked. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. shocked. Yeah, but you might want to wear a diaper when you go to see this movie because you could see it <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Spoil yourself. And, and about Paolo, he's such a huge character. And I know you're very good in transforming yourself when you did Dallas Buyers Club. But this transformation for Paolo is really something because I was wondering where is Jared Leto all the time when I was watching the movie? So how did you make this character happen? Have you... Like, see any interview, read anything about him? How did you get to, to create your Paolo? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's the highest compliment you can pay me, uh, mm -hmm. other than giving me cash. Uh, <laughs> I know, uh, you have plenty of that. Yeah, well, it was a dream. I mean, I really did fall in love with Paolo, that old son of a bitch. Uh, he was a lot of fun. A lot of heart, a lot of humor, and um, it's a bit of a dream for me, all of this, because we just shot it in March. So it was kind of just in February, Mar February, March, and, you know, it was coming out of uh, lockdown, quarantine, flying to mm -hmm. quarantine, flying to, to Rome, and kind of bringing this to life. It was just kind of a surreal, it's magical, and... Uh, I'm very touched that audiences are enjoying the character and that people are, you know, um, having fun with um, PG. And how do how would you describe him? Because at the same time, he's a little silly and he's like an outcast from the family. And but he does a lot of things and everybody's like humiliating, humiliating him all the time. And he has such an anger, but at the, the same time, a lot of innocence inside him. So. That's really hard to do, right? Yeah, I think he's full of a lot of conflict. He's full of a lot of pain, but also joy. And he wants to share his work with the world. Um, he's, a, he's an artist at heart. Uh, and, you know, he's full of song and dance. Um, it, it was a, it's a challenge to bring to life any real person. Uh, yeah you know, uh, it, that, that is a challenging thing to do. And there's a certain responsibility there. And, um, but I, I really enjoyed that challenge. I was really uh, excited about it. 
you said about playing a real person. Did you have any research, any material that you could work with to create Paulo and like, oh, recreate him as, as similar as possible or no? Yeah, there was a lot of research that we did, um, a lot of stretching of the skin, so to speak. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that this stuff is, is it's essential. You got to learn as much as you can. You know, I'm just, I'm thankful he didn't pierce his nipples because I'd be sitting here with two <laughs> You know, I, I was willing to do anything, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to, to be, a, you know, pay tribute to this guy and bring him to life in the way that he deserved to be. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure that you have answered this question a lot, but how long did it take for your makeup? It didn't take very long compared to what had to be done on the inside, which mm. was the important stuff. And, um, okay. you know, the physical stuff is, is, is fascinating. And as you know, I'm, I'm very interested in that. But the, the internal, none of that matters. You can put on a mask, but if you don't have the guts and the heart and the stench inside the colon, then you have nothing, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you have to have rotten hay inside your belly. You understand? Okay. There has to be a yes. mushroom growing on your liver. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jared. We're waiting you here again in Brazil as soon as possible, okay? Love you guys in Brazil. Please eat some acai for me today. Okay, I will, I'll do it in Fasano. <laughs> yes, in Fasano is a fucking acai and celebrate my name. Yell my name out on the beaches of Rio. Jared, Jared, I'll be doing yelling you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. See you soon. E aí, gente, gostaram? Lady Gaga muito fofa, né? A gente já tá assim, gente. Jared Leto também, mandando a gente comer a sair do Fazano. Ô, oh, meu pai, o Fazano. Depois eu vou mandar conta aí desse publi, pra mim e pro Jared. Olha, House of Gucci estreia nos cinemas em novembro. Vocês não podem perder, porque eu tenho certeza que vocês vão ficar passados, porque eu fiquei. É um filmaço e tenho certeza que teremos várias indicações ao Oscar partindo desse filme. Então é isso, beijo pra vocês. E até a próxima entrevista. Ah, não esquece de comentar, é, ativar o sininho, compartilhar. É, se você estiver vendo no GTV, comenta, compartilha também, reposta, para ajudar o coleguinha aqui que trabalhou sem voz aqui para trazer esse entretenimento para vocês. Se bem que eu achei ótimo conversar com a Lady Gaga, você vê como ela estava belíssima. E o dia do Leto, coitado, morto, descansado, deu até, eu, deu até um bocejo. Mas foram os dois muito fofos e todo mundo quer falar do Brasil. <música>